So let's turn now to a retailer that's actually investing in stores, investing in real world experiences. We have Catherine Pike. She's the Senior Director of Retail at Viore, a performance apparel brand. Uh, before that, Catherine worked on the Lululemon team, uh, investing in the strategies that led to a lot of growth within the US. And I'm excited to talk to her about the strategies that they're employing now at Viore to engage customers and drive sales. Hi, Catherine. Hi. Great to have you here on Retail Innovation Week. Yeah, I'm very excited to be here. Thanks for having me. So um, let's just set some context. Um, tell them, it's a, for, some, for a lot of our audience, it, it might be a new brand for them. Perhaps you can just give us a little context about that brand. Yeah, absolutely. So we're a new take on performance apparel. So, um, you know, ultimate versatility. I love how our products, you can really wear them from everything from work to home to work from home, great workout, run with your kids on the beach, um, ultimate comfort, just incredible fabrics and really a new, a new look and a new feel for performance apparel. Yeah, um, you seem to be in a very exciting space. There seems to be a number of companies looking at apparel and um, definitely Viore seems to be one of the companies that's standing out. And, um, you know, I guess it can be classified as a DTC company. But uh, interestingly, uh, there's a lot of investment in retail, as I said at the start. What's motivating that? Yeah. So, I mean, I think it goes back to the early days of just um, our founder and CEO and the founding team believing in human connection and people wanting to be together. Um, they opened their first store in Encinitas. And I think it was, you know, it was obviously a place to sell the product. But more than that, it was after hours, it was where they held art shows and fitness classes and gathered together when book speakers came into town and just it really became a place for like-minded people who loved the brand to have a space to gather in so that that's really the foundation of it that's where our first store started and we really stay true to that as we open our new stores in new markets so many brands seem to be created on whiteboards these days and to kind of hear that story about uh the sort of cooking this chemistry class where you were trying where the founders were trying to uh, work out what works and what doesn't work sounds it's quite inspiring um, so and and obviously we're at a certain time can you help me understand the sort of ambition uh, Viore has over the next 12 24 months in terms of stores we are expanding. We're really looking at, you know, right now is an interesting time to look at real estate opportunities because there aren't, you know, a ton of other people out there looking for new spots. But we're really finding that if we find the right community and the right market and the right deals, it's actually a wonderful time for us to be getting in, getting great spaces. And we really go in with that original intention, which is to be people first, recruit awesome team members get them out there connecting with the community. And then, you know, hopefully soon have the stores will be back to gathering people and bringing them in in a, in a less distanced um, line-based fashion. I mean, when we do think about uh, that next stage, um, you know, I've heard from you and a number of different speakers about that human connection and the importance of human connection. That's one thing that the store provides that you can't really get online. Um, but maybe you can talk a little bit about the employment of technology and how technology supports the store associates or supports that human experience. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think that um, technology is hugely important right now. We're very focused on making a seamless experience between online and in our stores and actually using technology so that our associates can have all the information they need to give you that best experience in person. So when they're armed with, you know, the information about what you've purchased, what sizes you've gotten, what colors you like, what you've returned that you didn't like, they can go into a conversation with you. And we're 10 steps ahead because technology has helped us get there. And we can give you that much better of an experience with that knowledge base. So really we look at our stores and our seamless technology between online and store as a way of elevating the customer experience 
so that it doesn't matter where you're, where you're shopping with us. Um, we can give you the best, best knowledge, the best experience there. Retailers, brands, and ecosystem partners in this, uh, in the, uh, audience are thinking, okay, well, we need to make investments like this. Do you have any advice about where to start? I mean, obviously there's a thousand solution providers and technology tools. Uh, is there some sort of guiding light or guiding principle about where, where you bring in technology into and where you don't? Yeah, I mean, I think it's really important to start by bringing all the key stakeholders in the organization together, because you think it may just involve a couple departments, but in reality, it touches everything. And if you don't have their voices and their perspective in the room, you may miss something and you may actually take yourself down a path. And then you've got a hole because you weren't paying attention to something that was going to become critical in the future. So I'd say that's definitely the starting place is make sure you really have representation from anyone who could feasibly in the future um, need to be involved or could give perspective. And then I'd say the second thing is just um, really coming back and asking what is, what is the customer experience? You know, things we want things convenient for our team, but they also have to be seamless for the customer. And when you're looking at those solutions, um, that really is what makes the difference is, is it going to make what we're trying to do easier to happen? I'd love to talk a little bit about uh, something that happened over the last few months where um, the, the Viore and the team invested in the store associates. Um, the store associates uh, didn't have much to do. I th maybe you were closing the stores or the cl stores um, were mothballed or something. I'd love to, uh, to talk about how you reacted to change and re-employed that staff. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we were in the same boat that all retailers were really unknown future. We had just closed all of our stores. You know, we were hopeful it would not be too long, but we had no idea and um, I think from a leadership perspective, our, our CEO and founder said, first and foremost, our goal is to keep our people together, keep our team together. So that really, that set the tone um, for me, you know, personally to be really determined and really creative with how we could still contribute and add value. And we saw that, you know, although our stores were closed, online was on fire. And so our marketing team was so busy, our customer service team, was having to flex into new roles of actually having to shop online and help people in a more proactive way because people were reaching out to them to ask questions. And so we started by um, cross-training and redeploying all of our retail staff into value add um, roles and skills that they could do within those two departments. Um, and it just, it kind of evolved from there. We started to say, okay, well, the shutdown's lasting longer. What else would we want a retail associate to know about so that when we do open, they're going to come back to the floor with a whole new skill set and set of knowledge. So we created a full training program where they actually spent hours a day learning about the design process, the product process. Like, you know, we, we looked at like, brand, um, our creative director worked with them, our CFO talked to them. So they really got like essentially a crash course in all of these HQ departments. And we said, you know, we know that by writing this training now, we're going to have associates who come back on the floor with so much more confidence and knowledge that they're going to bring to that customer experience. And it's absolutely worked. It's been a huge success. And we actually created a new role because of it. Yeah, so we found that, um, you know, in retail, you obviously have flex of when you're busy and when you're not, and customer service does as well. And if you have people that are trained, and so our role, our title is called Omni Associates, to flex back and forth between those two departments, we found that um, that role has added huge value, both in the customer service world and the retail world. It's enabled us to attract new and different talent, really. Um, it's a great recruiting tool. It opens upward mobility for people who take those roles, you know, into multiple departments. And, you know, most importantly, these people can help our customers in new and different ways because of that increased skill set. So we started with a couple Omni associates per store, and we're actually looking to increase it um, to about 50% of our full-time staff. Um, and in terms of training staff, let's say you have new staff who are classical store associates. Are there any elements of that super training 
uh, that you're going to um, bring to the store floor? You know, is it a chat with a creative director or is there any, any other things that you think are special elements that you're going to employ? I mean, the product piece was definitely the part that made the biggest difference. Um, I, I just like, I smile when I hear an associate um, describe to a customer, we, like they talk about, we designed the product and they really mean the we now, like they were there. They heard about the choice. They're on the product team. It's really, it's cool. Um, it's a cool experience and you see that passion come through. And I think the customers really recognize it as too, that they're they're speaking to someone who like, wasn't just trained on a, you know, bullet point script, but they're truly speaking from, I got to sit in front of, you know, on a screen, the head of product design. And she told me why she chose to make this adjustment or design this this way. It's, it's pretty cool. Closeness between leadership and the store floor. Uh, it seems to be coming through into what you're talking about. Uh, any fun uh, in terms of next steps, future plans, anything that you can reveal about what you're going to try to do in the next 12 months? I mean, there's there's new markets coming. We're so excited to bring Dior to new cities and new markets. That's, that's obviously something that we're working hard on. Um, the brand is expanding so quickly, so we really can't get wait to get out there and find all these people who found us online and give them a home and a, a place to come to. Um, we're also just continuing to invest in, like you said, growing that technology and that omni experience. Um, we're uh, we're there, but we still have steps to take in order to make it so that you can buy online, pick up in store, you know, do all those cool technology things that just make it even easier for the customer. That's wonderful. It's been, it's been truly inspiring. Catherine Pike, Senior Director of Retail at Fiore. I really appreciate your time today. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.